Around 1891, Nikola Tesla started investigating impulse electricity. His most interesting work started. And to create this impulse, he used a capacitor discharge. But this is very tricky. But there's another way. It is the discharge of a coil. So in this video, I will talk about how to create impulses by making use of a coil. Enjoy. This video is part of a series of videos explaining my new circuit. This circuit is a radiant energy circuit and produces a longitudinal energy effect. In the same era that Nikola Tesla researched impulse electricity, he gave out the patent for the bifilar coil in 1894. And this is no coincidence because the bifilar coil is perfect for making use of impulse electricity. Let's proceed with the impulse itself. What is this impulse and what does it look like? If you have a coil and you are switching the high side, which is the positive voltage. So this is a switch and here you have the ground. Then the magnetic field will produce an impulse that is normally known as the inductive spike. What does it look like? You have the voltage that is switched off and suddenly you have this really massive voltage spike called the inductive spike. And this is an impulse. The duration, which is this, should be really short. And this is the voltage. The shorter the duration, the higher the voltage will be. Because the energy is related to the surface area of this spike. With a longer duration, you will have less voltage, but the same surface area. So this is much longer and this is less voltage. So on a scope you would look at it like this. They would be single impulses. The distance between the impulses determines the frequency. So let's say 100 kilohertz. And if you zoom into one of those impulses you can see the duration of the impulse which is like 200 nanoseconds. So it really is a spike. We've got a capacitor that is charged up and it is discharged by a spark gap. And this is how Tesla did it. The spark closes the circuit and then the capacitor can discharge. As Steinmetz uh, explained, the dielectric field of the capacitor and the magnetic field of a coil are analogous. Instead of charging up a capacitor, I charge up a coil. We can charge up a coil with a magnetic field by closing the circuit to a battery. Then when the electric energy is stored in the magnetic field of the coil, we can open up the switch. And then the magnetic field energy of the coil transforms into a massive impulse called the inductive spike. So that's why I use coils. The inductive spike is the impulse. And by using a MOSFET, we can go up to around 1700 volts with a very, very, very short duration. This magnetic field is generated when the switch is closed. So it charges up from the battery. And then when we open up the switch really fast, the magnetic field energy is instantly transformed into a impulse. This is what Tesla did. Tesla closed the switch with a spark gap. And we can't replace anything else than using the spark gap in this method with the capacitor discharge because the energy is so highly intense in the impulse that if you use a, a MOSFET or a transistor into this circuit to discharge the capacitor, all the energy will travel through the transistor and will destroy it. Now with an inductor, the discharge happens when the switch is opened. And therefore, 
the energy does not travel through the switch and the switch isn't destroyed. This makes life a lot easier for now we can use a MOSFET. With a coil we can create positive or negative impulses by switching the high side or the low side. Let's take a look at this. If we switch the positive voltage supply to the coil, we get a negative impulse. And if we switch the negative voltage supply of the coil, we will get a positive impulse. This is due to Lenz law. What you put in is opposite to what you get out, basically. So now we have the switch that is made of a MOSFET. This solid state switch needs to switch really, really fast for the impulse to be really fast. Then there is the resistance, the wire resistance. And uh, if you use connectors, you need to have really low resistance connectors. The copper wire of the coil is uh, of influence because the resistance needs to be low. So use pure copper, use thick enough speaker wire like uh, 1.5 millimeters squared. I like to use silver plated copper for the leads here. The essence is to get a very low resistance uh, circuit path for the impulse. Another thing with these impulse generation coils is you can prolong the duration of the impulse and lower its voltage by putting a capacitor parallel over the coil. The capacitor needs to be really small, like 500 picofarads or 1000, you'll, you'll need to experiment with this. What this does is the impulse that is generated will go into the capacitor charge it up really really fast and discharge it again really fast and this makes the duration of the impulse a little bit longer and therefore the voltage will be a little bit lower the impulse duration and height in voltage is dependent on the resonant frequency of the coil producing the impulse because they are basically equal by raising the resonant frequency, we can shorten the wave duration and therefore shorten the duration of the impulse. And how we do this is by changing the capacitance and the resistance of the coil. We need high inductance and we need low capacitance for a very high resonant frequency and low duration impulse. For low resistance, we can use uh, silver plated copper wire. We can use thick copper wire like 1.5 millimeter squared to get really low resistance. For low capacitance, um, the bifiler coil isn't suited because as we've learned in another video, the capacitance of a bifiler coil is increased. That is a problem. We can't use a regular bifiler coil. And the inductance is increased by making more turns but making more turns usually also ends up in more resistance. There's another trick. We have mutual inductance. If we put two coils together and we hook them up uh, in series, then the magnetic field of one coil will increase the magnetic field of the other coil. The, both of the magnetic fields are joined together and they are added up. So uh, we need a coil that has mutual inductance. Normally with a bifiler coil, you take the beginning of one coil and the ending of the other coil and you hook them up in series. I explained this in another video, you can look it up. Now this method of series connecting will gonna do different. This time, instead of hooking up the inside rim to the outside rim, we are now hooking up the outsides of the coil or the insides of the coil. We now have a coil that has counter rotation in it. The first winding will go counterclockwise and the second winding through the series connection will go the opposite direction, clockwise. What this does 
is create a magnetic field in the first winding that is opposite to the magnetic field in the second winding. So now we have a coil with opposing magnetic fields. And this is uh, something that nature doesn't like and wants to get rid of. And how it uh, gets rid of this twisted energy field uh, is by uh, pushing the energy out in the form of a very strong impulse. I've got here two magnets and if I want to pull them apart I will need some force and because these are neodymium magnets you need pretty much force so but it can be done it's not that hard but if I now reverse one magnet and I want to put them together of course they will repulse they do not like to be together if I now put force into putting the magnets together again I need a lot more force to get it together I am really putting in a lot of effort in it to get them this close together I'm pushing really hard much harder than I need to pull the magnets apart and you can try it for yourself just try to feel the force that is needed to put two opposing magnets together and compare it to the force that is needed to take them apart and this concept is very interesting because if you use a repulsion coil to make repulsing magnetic fields the force is uh, much stronger and you can get a lot more out of it and what we get out is the impulse the impulse will be uh, much higher in voltage and lower in duration here is such a coil what I've done with this coil is hooked up the center part these are series connected from the center and the outside is connected to the power source I've done one more thing I created an increased distance between the windings this reduces the capacitance of the coil even more because with the capacitor the closer the, the plates are the higher the capacitance by removing the plates of the capacitor we get a reduced capacitance and that is what's needed for a impulse uh, generation that has a low duration with this coil if i charge it up the magnetic fields will be opposing they will be uh, under a lot of stress a lot of tension and uh, if i now open the switch the energy will uh, rush out gladly uh, there is low capacitance there is low resistance because I use very thick copper wire, pure copper, and uh, this is uh, a guarantee for a really high voltage, low duration impulse. Donations are always much appreciated because this work is all open source, meaning that I will share all the information that I gain with the community that is interested. You can fund this open source research by giving a donation on my PayPal account that is listed below in the description of the video. If you have questions, you can do so in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share this video and turn on notifications if you want to get a personal call when my next video is out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.